So continuing our discussion of discrete time dynamical systems, let's go over a couple cases where the dynamics are a little bit more complicated than just going a strictly straight to an equilibrium point or away from an equilibrium point, right? So we'll, we'll cover a system where there's actually uh, oscillatory dynamics, where the values of this discrete time dynamical system are going to be still approaching the equilibrium point, but they'll be kind of circling it as opposed to going straight towards it. So they're kind of oscillating around the equilibrium point before settling down. It's a bit different uh, mathematically too. Okay, so we'll introduce the model of logistic growth. So this is kind of the base of the uh, our fishing model, right? We have a number of fish, let's say at time t plus one, is r times the number of fish at time t times one minus the number of fish at time t divided by the carrying capacity k. Okay, so uh, when we have this, you know, minus h and t, right? This is like our harvest term. So without it, it's just logistic growth. Okay, so we've seen it with the harvest. Now we're just going to think about it, you know, without harvesting, just what is this population doing on its own? Okay, so this is the number of fish. So to make it uh, make the math a little bit simpler, we can change this to xt. Let's just change it to x instead. So xt is going to be nt over k. So it's kind of like the fraction of the total population or of the max population. Right, so instead of looking at the population, we'll look at kind of the fraction of its maximum value. Right, we'll call that xt. So if you make this uh, substitution, then that changes the discrete time system to just being x at time t plus one is equal to r xt one minus xt. It's a little bit simpler to work with, okay? And so let's look and see what happens for different growth rates r, right? For different growth rates are. So we'll just look at a couple cobwebbing diagrams to kind of get a sense of what's happening in this system. Okay, so let me switch over. Uh huh. All right, so here we have r is equal to 0 0.5, and we can see when the growth rate isn't high enough, then the only equilibrium point is at zero, right, the extinction, and there's no kind of equilibrium point above that. So if I start with some, you know, non-zero population levels, so let's start with the population fraction 0.7, right? If I iterate this, if I cobweb this, I end up going to zero, right? Because that's the only stable equilibrium for this system, stable positive equilibrium, right? Or non-negative. Okay, so what if we change that growth rate a little bit more, right? Let's make that growth rate 1.5. Now, right away, you can see in blue is our update rule, and now we have two intersections, right? One at zero still, and then one at, uh, looks like it's about 0.35, okay? So if I start, you know, in the same place with 0.7 individuals, maybe I'm over the uh, carrying capacity of the system, and so we end up going to this stable point right here at 0.333. Okay, so now this is a stable equilibrium, and zero, if I start near zero, right, let's start at 0 0.1, we move away from zero. So now zero is unstable, and this kind of higher population level is our equilibrium population. It's at 0.33, so one third of the total max population, right, and that's going to be our stable equilibrium point here. Okay, and then what happens if I change this growth rate even higher? Okay, so we've covered that, that this, these two equilibrium make sense because the update rule is crossing the identity line from below here with positive slope and from ab above here with positive slope. But if I increase this r even further, right, now it's r equals 2.5, now it's crossing it on kind of the downward curve of this parabola, right? So now my update rule is crossing the identity line, still from above, but now it has negative slope there. So something different is going to happen here, right? So we're not really kind of sure whether it's going to be stable or unstable because we didn't really cover this yet, right? We know when you cross from above with positive slope, then that means it's stable. But let's see what happens when you cross from above with a negative slope, right? So let's start near this point. We're going to start at 0 0.7. This thing's at about 0 0.6. So if I iterate from here, right, it looks like we're heading towards it. But you can see we're oscillating, right? 
if I look at my numbers here, you can see we're going 0 0.7, 0 0.5, and then we go over the value, we overshoot it, 0 0.62, then we undershoot 0.58, then we overshoot 0.606, then we undershoot 0.596, then we overshoot 0.601, undershoot, overshoot, undershoot, overshoot, until we eventually settle down at the equilibrium value, right? And so that's why you get this kind of spiraling pattern in the cobweb dime room, because you're constantly overshooting and then undershooting and then overshooting and then undershooting this equilibrium point, okay? So this is still stable, but it's kind of a different type of stability, right? Because we're not heading straight to this point, we're sort of circling it in, in our state space, okay? So what happens if I keep increasing this R, right? I'm going to probably still cross from above with negative slope, but maybe it'll be a bit steeper, right? Now we're crossing the identity line, much steeper than the last time, still negative, still from above, right? And when you're crossing with negative slope, you can actually only cross from above. If you think about how two lines intersect, if one's going this way and the other's going the opposite direction, right? So y equals x always has positive slope. So any negative sloping line is always going to cross it from above. That's just how it's going to happen. So that's not even really consideration anymore. We'll just be thinking about the slope here. So now we're crossing it uh, negatively, right? With a negative slope, we're crossing this equilibrium point. Let's cobweb to see what happens, right? I'm starting pretty close to this equilibrium point. I think it's at like 0.71, and I'm starting at 0.7. So if it's stable, then we should get there pretty quick. If it's unstable, then we'll we'll be able to see that, all right? So let's iterate this map, all right? So I cobweb, and it looks like we are actually leaving it, and we're spiraling, right? So we're spiraling away from it, and we just keep going, and eventually, it'll get over here, or maybe it'll get caught in some sort of um, cycle over here. But in any case, the uh, point here is unstable because we're moving away from it when we started really close to it, right? And then this spiraling pattern tells us that, you know, there's something interesting going on here. It's not just moving away strictly in, you know, an increasing fashion or a decreasing fashion. It's actually going up and then down and then up and then down, kind of away from this equilibrium point. Okay, so that's what we call, that's, you know, what we're referring to when we're talking about oscillatory dynamics, is that both in this case where it's unstable and this case where it's stable, there's oscillations in kind of the, uh, the trajectory of your population level, right? You're going up and then down and then up and then down. Here you're going up and down and up and down, but you're going away from this equilibrium point. Here you're going up and down towards that equilibrium point. So you're kind of settling down. You think like maybe... A pendulum that is kind of swinging back and forth and then as it slows down it keeps swinging until it settles down whereas this would be i don't know some pendulum going crazy where then it's just getting further and further wildly oscillating back and forth but not actually getting towards that equilibrium point okay so let's see what's happening uh, in terms of the derivative here so let's go back to our function right so you know for r equals 0 0.5, what we saw from this cobwebbing diagram was that only x star equals zero was a stable equilibrium, right? And then when we increased that to 1.5, we saw that x equals zero became unstable, and we got a new stable point at one third. Okay, and then for r equals 2.5, we saw that x star equals zero was still unstable, but that this new, you know, this positive equilibrium point, which was at, um, I think in this case it was at 0 0.6, is stable and oscillatory, right? We were kind of oscillating towards that equilibrium point. And then when we kept increasing r, right, at r equals 3.5, we saw that x star uh, was still unstable, right, and that this new point, the, or the other equilibrium point, was unstable and oscillatory. Okay. So maybe I didn't point out the stability of zero, but let's go back just briefly if i start 
you know, in this one, that one was stable. And if we start close to zero, it's unstable here because we're moving away from it towards this one. And then you can see we're circling into it. And if I switch over to this one, if I start near zero, again, we move away from the zero and then we kind of end up on this weird cycle. So, I mean, this is even more complicated. We won't get into this, but when you have two unstable equilibrium points, your trajectories have to go somewhere. And because there's no equilibrium point for them to go to, they get stuck on some cycle. So we won't really get into that, but that's just kind of interesting to see here. Okay, so let's go back to the notes. Okay, so uh, we'll be able to classify the stability kind of carefully with the derivative here. But this is just reading off the information that we saw on the cobwebbing diagram. Okay, so this is all from cobwebbing. What does the derivative tell us here though? Okay, so our function, right? So the derivative information here, our function was x at time t plus one is some function of x t. And that function was r x t one minus x t. Okay, so let's think about this function f of x, which is r x one minus x. Okay, if we take its derivative, right? F prime of x. Well, let's just factor this out. This gives us r x minus r x squared. So now our derivative is just r minus two r x. Okay, so that's our derivative. And let's think about what those equilibrium points are. Right, so if I go back and calculate these equilibrium points more generally, right, we have x star equals f of x star, right? So that means x star equals r x star one minus x star, right? So right away we can see that if x star equals zero, then that automatically satisfies this equation. So then we can kind of, okay, we took out x star, so now let's divide by x star, so that gives us one equals r, one minus x star. And then let's just solve this. So we get one minus r equals minus r x star, or x star is equal to one minus r divided by negative r, which is r minus one over r. Okay. Or another way to write that is one minus one over r. Okay, so maybe that's the, the one we'll use, right? So if you go back to these things here, right? When R was 1.5, then, right? So this works because, you know, R equals 1.5 tells us that the equilibriums are at zero and one minus one over 1.5, which is um, one minus, uh, Let's look up this number. One over 1.5 gives us 0.666, right? So two thirds. So then this gives us one third or 0 0.333, which is what we had before, right? So this equation is, is the one that gives us those equilibriums that we just kind of picked off from the cobwebbing diagram, right? But we now have a formula for them as well, okay? So then let's classify the stability. Okay, so if we look at our derivative, f prime of x star equals r minus two rx, or r, um, yeah, r minus two rx star. Okay, so let's classify uh, f prime at zero, right? That's gonna be r minus zero. So it's just equal to r, okay? So then <clears throat> based on what we learned before, right? We learned that the derivative, when it's positive, right? So r is always a positive number because it's a growth rate. It's not gonna be a negative growth rate. That, that wouldn't make sense. So when r is greater than one, zero will be unstable. When r is less than one, it will be stable, right? So this tells us that when r is less than, sorry, when r is less than one, f prime of zero is between zero and one, 
So zero is stable, right? And when R is bigger than one, zero is less than, uh, sorry, F prime of zero is now going to be bigger than one, which means that zero is unstable by our stability criterion that we learned in the last video. Okay, and so that corresponds with what we saw in this table, right? When R is 0 0.5, R is less than one, so zero is stable. When R is bigger than one, right? So for all three of these, X star equals zero was unstable in those cobwebbing diagrams. And it's because of this derivative here. Okay, so now let's think about the other, right? Equilibrium point, so let's look at X star equals one minus one over R now, okay? So if I look at this, F prime of X star equals R minus two R X star. So let's plug in one minus one over R. That gives us R minus two R one minus one over R, okay? So then let's simplify this out to see if we can kind of see what's happening as we change R. So this gives us R minus two R plus 2r over r, right? So that gives us negative r plus 2, or maybe 2 minus r, okay? So then what this tells us is that this derivative will be positive when 2 minus r is positive. The derivative will be negative when 2 minus r is negative, okay? So like we saw before in these cobwebbing diagrams, for these two, we saw that the slope was positive when we crossed that. And for these two, r is less than two, right? Which makes sense, because then two minus r will be positive. And then for these two, two minus r is negative, right? Two minus 2.5 would be negative, two minus 3.5 would be negative. And we saw that those cobwebbing diagrams, they crossed the identity line with negative slope. So that makes sense, okay? So let's uh, see if we can classify here, right? So when, uh, let's make a table here, right? So zero, f prime of uh, one minus one over r is less than one, right? For this to be true, that would imply that one minus one over r is stable, right? And so when is this true? Well, let's set this up. Zero less than two minus r less than one. So zero is less than, sorry, we add r to all the sides. r is between two and one plus r. Um, right? So R is less than two is kind of the, the only one here that makes sense, okay? So when R is less than two and positive, then we know that two minus R will be less than one, right? So for R less than two and positive, okay? And then for F prime of one minus one over R, to be, uh, you know, maybe this is a little too complicated. Let's just go with the numbers. Sorry about that. Let's just make this simpler. Let's say when r equals 0 0.5, right? Then this uh, f prime of one minus one over r is equal to two minus 0 0.5 which is 1.5, which is bigger than one. So this uh, would be unstable, right? But in this case, one minus one over R was, was actually a negative number. So we kind of didn't, we didn't ignore this anyways, right? One minus one over 0 0.5 is one minus two, which is negative one. So we ignore anyways, right? So this is for when uh, one of these stable Population levels is actually a negative number. and It doesn't really make sense physically. So then let's move on to the next one. So when R is equal to 1.5, right? X star equals one minus one over R. We said that was when X star was 0 0.33, right? And then if we plug in this into our derivative, right? So X, the first derivative of that update function at this equilibrium point, is equal to two minus r, which is two minus 1.5, which is 0 0.5, right? So then, okay, this derivative is positive, 
it's less than one. So X star equals 0 0.33 is stable. All right. And then when R is equal to 2.5, let's see what happens. X star equals one minus one over 2.5, which is, uh, well, when we look, when we looked at the cobbling diagram, this was about 0.6. So then F prime at 0 0.6, is equal to two minus r. In this case, r is 2.5. So we plug that in, we get negative 0 0.5, which is uh, less than zero. And you know we don't really know what to be looking for here, but I'll, I'll kind of give away uh, the answer here is that this is between zero and negative one, right? So it's kind of thinking about this thing symmetrically. So here we have uh, negative one is less than f prime of 0 0.6 is less than zero. And so what we saw in the cobwebbing diagram was that X star equals 0 0.6 was stable. And kind of uh, solutions oscillated towards it. So we say it's stable and oscillatory, right? Or it's a stable spiral, right? So you could say it's stable and oscillatory. You could say it's a stable spiral is kind of the classification of that equilibrium point. Okay, because we're spiraling into it. And that'll happen whenever this first derivative is negative, but less than one in magnitude or, you know, negative and bigger than minus one. Okay. And then the last case was when R is equal to 3.5. Right, we saw that X star was one minus one over 3.5, which was about 0 0.71 something, right? So F prime at this X star is two minus R, which in this case is two minus 3.5, which is negative 1.5. And for this case, this derivative is steep and negative. So we'd say, okay, F prime of negative, sorry, F prime of 0 0.71, is bigger, sorry, is more negative, so less than negative 1.5. So it's neg it's sorry, it's less than negative one. And because it's bigger in magnitude than one, that means it's unstable. Equals 0 0.71 is unstable. And because it is negative, it's a spiral as well. So we'd say it's an unstable spiral unstable and oscillatory, okay? And this kind of gives us to our classifications, right? So let's finish up that stability criterion. So now we've seen, and we'll show it in another video why exactly this is, but we've shown that, you know, for a discrete time system, xt plus 1 equals f of xt. An equilibrium x star can be classified by if the absolute value of that first derivative is less than 1, it's stable. And if the absolute value of that first derivative is greater than one, it's unstable. Okay, so this is kind of summarizing uh, both of those cases. So when it's negative, it's stable and oscillatory or unstable and oscillatory, right? So then, you know, if f prime of x star is negative, it's also oscillatory or a spiral. Okay, so you can check the magnitude of that derivative, right? So the absolute value of that derivative is this greater than or less than one that determines the stability. And then the sign of it determines whether it's just going to be a normal equilibrium point that you're just approaching from one side or an oscillatory one where you're kind of spiraling into it or away from it, right? And then of course, if F prime of X star is magnitude exactly equal to one, then uh, this test is inconclusive. Okay, and then you really have to pay attention to the 
cobwebbing drawing room to see what's going on. And so when they are actually equal to one, these kind of borderline cases anyways. And so something something weird is going on. But more often than not, it'll be, you know, less than one, greater than one. Maybe it's negative, maybe it's positive. Uh, very rarely will you actually have an equilibrium where the slope at that equilibrium is exactly equal to one. All right, so sorry for the long video, but you know, it's just kind of a, a topic with a lot going on. So hopefully it's not too confusing.